Hi, my name is Margaret Tian. I'm a senior at the North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics. Uh, and I'm Max Tucker, a fellow senior here at North Carolina School of Science and Math. Um, and we're here today uh, interviewing Elizabeth, a petroleum engineer. And we'd like to learn more about her career. Hi, guys. So we were wondering, uh, how did you become interested in engineering, and when did this happen? So when I graduated from high school, I really had a fascination with flight. Um, and so what I did is I actually moved to the beach, and I learned how to hang glide. And that started um, a passion in aerospace engineering for me. So when I uh, went to college, I wanted to go into aerospace, and uh, then I realized there weren't a lot of jobs in aerospace engineering at that time, so I changed to material science and engineering, which was one of my other passions in, call in uh, high school uh, for chemistry. And uh, when I graduated, I started working in oil and gas and ended up getting a master's in petroleum engineering. So I actually have two degrees in, in engineering. Okay, so today um, sustainability is obviously a very hot topic. And I guess when you think of sustainability, you don't often think of petroleum engineer. So how would you say that your job kind of interfaces with sustainability today? And do you ever worry about your job security because of the evolving sustainability market? So sustainability is really all about innovating and doing things more efficient, right? Which is really, as engineers, the core of what we do. Um, so there are lots of ways to be innovative and more efficient in every industry. So in petroleum, for example, one of the things that, that we're doing is we are doing things faster, we're doing things cheaper, we're doing things uh, with less uh, demand on the environment. And there's a constant push to um, try and minimize your impact. Right? So some of the things that we're trying to do is uh, drill wells from pads. And what that does is it uh, helps remove the surface damage that, that you have uh, because you're drilling more wells from, from one specific location. Um, and there, there are so many petroleum companies who are actually are putting a lot of money into investing in uh, renewables and sustainable development. You see the MIT Energy Initiative, which is funded in part by Shell, Saudi Aramco, Statoil. These are major uh, integrated oil and gas companies who are very, very interested in renewables and sustainability. And in terms of uh, your second question about, am I concerned about job security? Um, absolutely not. Um, where the US has gone through a bit of a recession in the last eight or 10 years, um, that's actually been uh, the converse in oil and gas. Uh, we've done nothing but higher, 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 higher. We've got an aging workforce that uh, many people are going to be retiring here in the next five to 10 years, and we need people to get interested in energy, in oil and gas, to fill some of that talent gap that we're gonna have over the next 20 to 30 years. So personally, absolutely not. I'm not concerned about uh, any sort of job shortages in my industry. And we were wondering, what's the most interesting place your job has taken you? So I've been a lot of places, um, some that you guys probably haven't even heard of. Um, I used to uh, go around and audit the oil and gas reserves for uh, international oil companies, governments, uh, national oil companies, which are um, oil companies owned by governments. And one of the more fascinating places that I've personally been to is a country called Brunei. Um, and uh, have you guys heard of Brunei? No. So that is um, adjoined with Malaysia. You've heard of Malaysia, right? So Asia Pacific, um, so it's an island. Brunei is governed by a king. And the reason why it's was fascinating for me was because it felt like being in the US in the 1940s. Everybody was so, so happy and they were so excited about everything and so nice that if you were going to cross a street, uh, even if you weren't at a crosswalk, the cars would stop and they'd look at you and wait for you to cross the street and they'd wave. And the pizza guy actually will let you pay next time. So if you order a pizza and you don't have any money, he'll go, oh, don't worry about it. You can just pay me next time which is, was really weird for me, living in a city. Uh, they would never do that. <laughs> I don't know if people on 9th Street would let you pay next time. <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. So that I've been a lot of places. I mean, I've been to Africa. I've been you know, to India. I've been to Turkey. I've been all over South America. Um, you know, 
all over Asia. So I've been a lot of very, very interesting places, which is one of the great things about energy is that it can take you anywhere you want to go. So it sounds like you travel a lot, but if there is any such thing as a typical day, what is it? What's it like for you on a day-to-day -day basis? So it, it depends on oil and gas and energy uh, are very, very diverse, right? So what's a typical day for me isn't a typical day for other engineers working in, in the industry. Um, what I do these days is I actually um, use my engineering uh, judgment and my engineering analysis to come up with fair market value for oil and gas assets. Right, so my company might want to buy something like you might want to buy a house someday and you need to come up with how much is that worth. That's what I do. And then we decide to buy it or not buy it. Um, and then we integrate that into the other properties that we own and operate. Um, so that's my typical day now. I go in the office, I review data, um, I calculate, I use software, I talk to people. Um, previously, I would go and visit other offices and collect information uh, and do engineering in the field. Other engineers might go out on a drilling rig. Um, they might be offshore. They might be somewhere like Nigeria for a month at a time, drilling wells, completing wells, operating, um, trying to do things efficient and safe. Um, safety is the foremost thing in our industry. Um, if you're not safe, you, you shouldn't be in the business as far as we're concerned. So we really rely heavily on engineers to make sure that, um, that we're doing things efficiently and safely. So as a petroleum engineer, what's your typical salary? So what I can tell you um, is that engineering in general um, are, is the salaries for engineering, uh, bachelor's degrees, are higher than I think any other bachelor's degree you could get um, if you were going to go work right out, out of school. Um, I don't know the specific statistics on what those are now, but there are not many majors that right out of college for a four-year degree are going to give you a better starting salary. Um, down the road, petroleum um, is one of the highest paying industries even within the engineering subdiscipline. Uh, because we have such a labor shortage, right? So we, we don't have um, technical people to fill a lot of these gaps that the retirees are, are creating. Um, starting salaries for petroleum engineers out of school, um, I've seen um, anywhere from you know eighty to $90,000 for people with a four-year degree coming right out of school. Um, and, and that's currently as of today. I don't hire people, so I don't know, you know what, what exactly people are getting, but um, it, it's a, if you're looking to make money it's a, and you don't want to go and get an advanced degree, it's a great option. Um, and engineering in general is a great option from a compensation standpoint. Thank you very much. I think that's all the questions we have. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Nice